Ukraine. It's an ancient and proud land with a rich history filled with much beauty, heroism, and sacrifice. Ukraine is a borderland, a place where East meets West. This is the flag of Ukraine. The blue represents the sky, the gold its seemingly endless fields of wheat. Ukraine is a prize many have sought, and much blood has spilled in the quest to possess it. Ukraine has been the pathway for Western powers as they attempted to conquer the East. In World War I and World War II. And every time, the Ukrainian people ended up paying the highest price for these grand games of power. History doesn't repeat, but it surely rhymes, said Mark Twain. If one looks closely at the history of Ukraine, one will notice many rhymes. Being surrounded by stronger powers, Ukraine has needed a lot of cunning to survive, and the art they truly mastered with time is the art of changing sides. In the middle of the 17th century, Ukrainian leader Bogdan Hmelnitsky broke a truce agreement made with Poland, siding with more powerful Russia. Just over 50 years later, as the Russian-Swedish war was raging, another Ukrainian leader, Ivan Mazepa, broke the union with Russia when he switched sides, joining forces with the Swedish invaders. Many times, Ukrainian history was written by third parties. Seeking to keep the gains of a revolution at any cost, Russia agreed to the humiliating conditions of the Brest-Litovsk Treaty of 1918, which turned Ukraine into a German protectorate. Another historical document that changed the fate of Ukraine was the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact of 1939, one of many such agreements being signed between European countries and rising Germany. Attempting to protect his nation from the approaching Nazi threat, Joseph Stalin negotiated a treaty of non-aggression with Adolf Hitler. While promising each other peace, the Soviet and German foreign ministers Molotov and Ribbentrop realigned the map of Eastern Europe, splitting it into German and Soviet spheres of influence. No sooner had the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact been signed than Poland was split. And in September of 1939, Eastern Poland awoke to be Western Ukraine and a part of the family of Soviet republics and the USSR. But even this bold dividing of lands and nations only delayed the inevitable. Germany broke its promise to the USSR. On June 22, 1941, Germany invaded the USSR launching Barbarossa, the largest military operation in world history. Barbarossa was aiming for St. Petersburg, Moscow, and Kiev, Ukraine, three destinations of major significance. Ukraine, with its rich lands and resources, was an important industrial and economic source for the USSR. To cut it off from the Soviet Union would strike a big blow indeed. For most of the Soviet Union, the Second World War was about fighting the invaders of their land. But it wasn't quite so simple for Ukraine. The truth is, Ukraine has never been a united country. When World War II broke out, a large part of Western Ukraine's population welcomed the German soldiers as liberators from the recently forced upon them Soviet rule and openly collaborated with the Germans. The real scale of collaboration was not announced for many years after the war, but we now know that whole divisions and battalions were formed by Ukrainian collaborators, such as SS Galitsyan, Noktigal, and Roland battalions. 
Just in the beginning of the war, more than 80,000 people from Galicina region voluntarily enrolled into Division SS Galician in a month and a half. Notorious for their extreme cruelty towards the Polish, Jewish, and Russian people on the territory of Ukraine. Members of these military groups came mostly from the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, the OUN, founded in 1929. This organization had an ultimate goal of creating an ethnically pure independent Ukraine and considered terror an acceptable tool for achieving their ends. Their official flag was black and red, land and blood. It will remain in Ukraine's history long after the OUN will cease to exist. In early 1940, the most radical nationalistic part of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists got its own leader, Stepan Bandera. Severely anti-Semitic and anti-communist, he proclaimed an independent Ukraine in 1941. His German allies frowned upon such an act of self-will and it landed him in prison for nearly all the Second World War. Not participating in the events physically, Bandera still managed to successfully spread his ideology. Many independent historians estimate that the OUN militia exterminated from 150 to 200,000 Jews on Ukrainian territory occupied by the Germans by the end of 1941. The most notorious and outrageous massacre took place September 29th and 30th, 1941 in Babiar, Kiev. All kikes of the city of Kiev and its vicinity must appear on Monday, September 29th by 8 o'clock in the morning. Bring documents, money, and valuables, and also warm clothing, linen, etc. Any kikes who do not follow this order and are found elsewhere will be shot. 33,771 Jews were killed in this two-day operation of the Nazis and Ukrainian militia. Another outrageous massacre was carried out by the Ukrainian insurgent army and the Bandera faction of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists in German-occupied Polish Volhynia and Eastern Galicia between 1943 and 1944. This genocide of Poles was led by Mykola Lebed, 35,000 to 60,000 people in Volhynia and 25 to 40,000 in Eastern Galicia fell victim to this massive ethnic cleansing operation. Sensing the inevitable loss of the German troops, the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists gave up on their former ally and began fighting equally against the Germans and the Soviet forces. In January 1943, USSR troops started pushing the Nazis back, liberating one part of Ukraine after another. Western Ukraine was the last Ukrainian region held by the Germans, finally being liberated in October of 1944. Bandera's bands continued to wage their guerrilla war against the Soviet regime, carrying out bloody raids on Ukrainian villages and towns, and leaving behind chaos and casualties. This war went on until the middle of the 1950s, when the last collaborators were either detained or fled the country. On May 7, 1945, Germany unconditionally surrendered.